the fourth time, they're going to beat you. Look at somebody say, don't aim too low. Take, say, take out all your arrows. Tell them, take all your rocks. The Bible says, and David went and found a brook and found five smooth rocks. He said, if I don't hit them with the first one, I'm going to get them with the second. If I don't get them with the second... I'm going to get him with the third. If I don't hit Elijah with the fourth one, the fifth one is sure going to kill him. But he only needed one rock. Look at somebody say, all you need is one rock. You might need six arrows, but you need just one rock, and that rock is Jesus. All right, go with me to Joel chapter number 2. Joel chapter number 2, verse 23 through 27. Joel, look at somebody say, use all your arrows. Use all of them. I mean, use them up. Don't leave a one because God wants to totally consume your enemies. He wants to give you ultimate victory. Joel chapter number two, starting at verse number 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. He hath given you the former rain moderately. Say the former rain moderately. Do you know why God gives you the former rain moderately? To see how you're going to praise him. The, the, you know why God gets, sprinkles you a little blessing here and there? To see if you're going to give him the glory. To see if you're going to really worship him. To see if you're going to go all out in your praise. Don't you know your praise determines your blessing? Y'all don't want to believe it. But I have learned that when I praise God for the small things. God blesses me so much on the back end, it's more than I can receive. It's more than I can even handle. He wastes sometimes. He spills it over on me. He gives the, he gives the former rain, the first rain. Look at somebody say the first rain. He gives it moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain. See, the former rain is light. I got any gardeners out here, any agriculturalists, any horticulturalists. The former rain, the former rain, you know about March, that little rain, the, the rain that comes in, it just blows, it just sprinkles. Uh, uh, but when April comes, because April showers brings May flowers. See, the former rain is in March. It's the light rain. And the farmer gets happy in March. He just starts dancing. Because uh, he couldn't be in a drought. He, he couldn't see no rain. Because there are seasons when things have to grow. You need the rain to show up in the right season. So the thing you want to grow can grow when you want it to grow. But if it shows up too late, you got to have artificial water. You got to have the former rain. The former rain shows up. It's, it's an indication that you planted your seed at the right time. It's an indication that what you've been working on, God has approved. It's an indication that God is getting ready to do something greater. So he sends the former rain to see how you're going to praise him. He sees the former rain to see if you can shout when you don't see nothing coming out of the ground. He sends the former rain to see if you will keep giving your tithes and offering, keep worshiping, keep coming to church, keep praying, keep fasting, keep living righteous, keep living holy. He's, he, he's watching you. Look at somebody say, God's got his eye on you. He's watching you to see if you will stay faithful. He's watching you to see if you stay committed. He's watching you to see if you will give it all to him. He wants to know, are you just here for the fanfare to impress people? Or are you here to really worship and serve me the former rain he gives it moderately he gives it moderately because if you put too much rain on the seed too early you are drown the seed uh, they got a thing they got a thing called root rot 
Ah, uh, root rot. That's, that's when you get too much water and the water doesn't come out of the basin or the, the instrument that's holding the crop. You got to have a plug on the side or underneath it to let some of the water out because the roots will rot because it's got too much water. Aren't you glad you serve a God that knows how to send the right amount of rain in your life? He doesn't overload you with rain so that you rot to your with it till you be depressed till you're down till you're sick till you go back to your old ways but he sends them rain moderately he sends the rain moderately the other day uh uh i i, I had a i had a garden uh and lady e planted a garden and, and i declare i declare to you the seeds that we use in this garden for my greens, y'all, because, yeah, because you know I'm a, uh, uh, I'm just a, I'm just a boy from Illinois, and I like greens, right? And I declare to you, this this wheat seed that I'm holding in my hand is bigger than the seed that we placed in the ground, and, and uh, you just p stick your finger in the hole. And you put one or two little seeds. I mean, the seed is so small. The seed is so small, it is smaller than the lint in your pocket. That's how small the seed is. If you dropped it in the grass, you would never find it. You, you could lose it. And this seed is so small, we, we dropped two or three in the hole. Lady E dropped about seven, eight. They tell you just drop about three, but she wanted a big crop. Now, uh, and we dropped it in there, and we started watering it, watering it, watering it, watering it. And, and it's, it's got the perfect sunlight. It gets 16 hours of sun. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's coming along real good. Going, uh, uh, Pastor Joe taught us how to do it, told us what to do. And, uh, and, and so uh, about a month later, I saw uh, little sprickets coming up. Mm -hmm. And I was just getting so happy. I, I mean, I was so happy that the little, the little flowering was coming up. No, no vegetable, no fruit, just the leaves. See, you got to learn how to praise God for the leaves. Not, not the fruit on the vine yet, not the fruit, not the vegetable, but just praise Him that something is coming out the ground. That just a little while longer, something's going to be on the vine. And we just started praising them and kept on watering. That's what you got to do, church. I don't care how bad it looks. Just keep on praising them. Just keep on watering it. And all of a sudden, you'll see some leaves come up. Leaves, leaves come up. Joel said, I'm going to give you the form of rain. I'm going to give you the form of rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain. Watch this in the first month. What God said is, I'm getting ready to give you overflow. Y'all need to hear me. God says, I'm getting ready to give you overflow. I'm getting ready. You might not be able to go outside because it's raining day and night. But just know this. You got something in the ground that needs this rain. You got something in the ground that needs this water. You got something in the ground that's getting ready to come up. And God says, I'm getting ready to give you overflow. And you're not going to have to wait till you're old and decrepit can't walk back her bursitis uh, all these situses God says I'm going to do it in the first month I'm going to send you the former and the latter rain. I wish I had a whole church in here that would just believe God. Say, my latter rain is coming. My first rain is coming. Say, I'm getting it in the first month. Just when the devil thought it was over, God sent some more rain. Just when the devil thought he had me over a barrel, God sent some rain. Just when the devil hit me with the worst news possible, God sent the rain. 
And then he said in verse number 24, and the floor shall be full of wheat. Come on, somebody. Uh, you, you say, you got to say it with your mouth. Say, say, I'm about to be full. I'm about to be full. Uh, my cupboard's about to be full. My joy is about to be full. The anointing upon me is about to be full. The healing in my hand is about to be full. My bank account is about to be full. My children getting ready to act right. I'm getting ready to be full. My floor is going to run over. I look at somebody and say, get something bigger. Get something bigger. You looking too small. You, you making God like you. Oh, but God says, I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to overflow your floors. Yeah. I'll never forget. And we were, uh, we were at the old church and uh, Pastor Joe, uh, you're just a, just a wonderful man. Um, my, my mother and father, they just love the church, love God, love worshiping, love serving. And, and, uh, and around Thanksgiving, uh, our church gave out Thanksgiving baskets. And uh, oftentimes my mom and dad would go and you can put your name on this list. You can put your name on this list and, and uh, uh, you, you didn't have to be a member of the church or nothing. In fact, they often wanted not the members of the church to get the basket. They wanted to give it to the community. And so uh, Pastor Joe uh, and me and my brothers, uh, all four of us, uh, uh, along with Pastor Joe, uh, we went to this, well, we went to this uh, place, this house, this uh, spot. And uh, we were coming in there uh, ready to, you know, just bless their Thanksgiving. And when we got in there, they had about seven baskets. <laughs> Turkey and dressing and all the fixings, that cake mix. Y'all don't hear me. I mean, all, I mean, the whole flow was just full of basket. That's what God going to do to you. You going to have so much, you going to have to give some of it away. He said, your floors are going to be full. Look at somebody say, my floor is about, it's about to run over. Tell them it's about to run over. It's like, look, it's, I wish I had somebody in here that would give God praise and say, it's about to run over. I'm about to overflow. I'm, I'm bursting at the seams. God is getting ready to to do something great in my life. I'm about to overflow. And he says, the fats shall overflow with wine. And this is literally what it means. He says, uh, when you interpret the scripture, you have to tell me what the author meant when he said what he wrote. And the author is literally saying that God is going to send you the rain that's going to grow your wheat and grow your grapes. That when it's all said and done, you're going to have so much wheat. It's going to overflow. You're going to have so many grapes. It's going to overflow. But the inferences here, the, the application is that wheat is bread. <laughs> he says, you going to have bread, baby. Say, look, I got some bread. I got some bread coming in my life. So, some bread. Say, say, y'all call me the house of bread. Look at somebody say, I'm getting ready to be debt free. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to walk in a new anointing. I'm getting ready to own property. I'm getting ready to own my own business. I'm getting ready to do something that's never been done in my family's history before because God's getting ready to turn my wheat into bread. We Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Bread, bread. Look at somebody say bread. Uh, let, ask somebody, you got some bread you can loan me. Yeah. And I'm not talking about Pillsbury dough. I'm talking about greenbacks. I'm talking about Franklin's. I'm talking about Jefferson's. I'm, I'm talking about Hamilton's. Look at somebody say, I got some bread. I got some bread. He says, and then your fats shall overflow with wine and oil. So now the interpretation is your grapes are going to grow and your olives are going to grow. So you're going to turn your grapes into wine and your olives into oil. 
Huh. The grapes turning into wine is for joy. He said, you about to have joy. Just some, tell somebody, wipe me down, wipe me down. I'm getting ready to have some joy unspeakable in my life. I've been sad. I've been down. I didn't know which way to go. Didn't know how I was going to come out of it. But God's about to send some joy in my life. But you guess what? Joy ain't no good if you ain't got the oil. You're going to have an anointed joy. You're going to have an anointed praise. You're going to have an anointed thanksgiving because he's going to send the bread, the wine, and the oil. He's going to send the bread, the joy, and the anointing. God's getting ready to make you to overflow. Uh, overflow. Verse number 25 says, and I will restore to you. I will. You know, when you see I will in the Bible and it's God speaking, it's a legal contract. See, 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 see y'all will be the generation that leave your children a will. You're not going to fight in probate court. You're going to have a trust fund. The trust fund's going to have a will in it. And the will says, you get this, you get this, you get this. And there is no law in the land that can stop you from getting what you will to your inheritance. That's what God's saying. He said, I got a legal contract with you. I will you a restoration. I will you joy. I will you peace. Peace. I will you the anointing. I will restore to you. It's a legal document. You, you know he's the judge when he's talking legality. Because that's the only time you need a judge. When something needs legal attention. And the judge is talking about a will. I will restore to you the years. I wonder, have you been counting the years you've been going through? Somebody needs to take tally. Somebody needs to count. You know, in 1976, this happened to me. I lost and I had to go backwards. And in 1982, this happened to me. In 1994, this happened. Had you been tallying it up? Because God says, I will restore to you the years. I want to talk to somebody who thinks their biological clock is running out. God says, I will restore to you the years years I'm going to restore to you the years somebody say I got some years payback say yeah, yeah. say they say my, they've been holding up my check uh, they say they wrongfully terminated me but God says I got a union rep working on my case and they going to restore to me the years and I need you to see this maybe there's nothing great that you lost but God says just think of something just, just think of something that you think you may have lost over the years God says I'm in the business of overflowing your life and I need you to give me something to overflow it too so he says I want to restore the years I never forget his brother at our church for whatever reason uh, he worked at the steel foundry and in that steel foundry, he dropped a ladle of hot iron, hot steel. Uh, Y'all might not know what a steel foundry is, but uh, I, uh, I visited a steel foundry almost every Sunday. And uh, you go and look in the, the little cauldron. What, what is it called, Pastor Joe? The little thing where the steel is melted. The melting pot, we're going to call it the melting pot. Yeah, we'll call it the melting pot. And, and in that melting pot, I believe, the furnace. That's Yes, sir, the furnace. Uh, in that furnace, now, it ain't your house furnace. Now, this, this thing is melting, taking hard iron ore and so much heat and liquefying it that if you jump in there, you will be no more. You will be mixed in with the molten. It looks like lava. And, and, and this brother, uh, he was driving one of those big bobcats. And, and, and this bobcat, it's a big, big cauldron. We call it a pot. 
is a pot belly pot. It has to be anywhere from 100, uh, maybe 50 feet diameter, and, and maybe uh, 10 to 20 feet long. It's a big cauldron, and it's full of melting uh, steel. It's full of it. Well, something happened. You know, this brother tipped the ladle. They call it a ladle, this pot. And the ladle flipped over and the heat mixed with the atmosphere of the ground blew a hole in the building. It was no wonder nobody died. But you make a mistake like that, you show sure enough fired. You, you gone. But he was in a union. And over a year, he went unemployed, fighting for his job over a mistake. Now, uh, if I was the owner of the company, I would have fired him too. Uh, he could have you know, wasted all my mail, you know, blew a hole in the top, probably got somebody into the kill. Uh, no, you reckless, something wrong. Uh, uh, but, but God ain't like us. For over a year, somebody say 365 days. Somebody say 52 weeks. Say, say 40 hours a week. For 52 weeks, no employment. Money, about to lose his house. All of a sudden, the union calls, said, you got to meet. The union and the arbitrator said, because of your record, you had no infractions prior to this. We are giving you back your job. But not only that, we're going to pay you the year's salary you lost. But not only that, all the raises and bonuses that were due to you in that year, we going to give you that too. Not only that, we going to pay you in advance for the year you're about to work because we made a mistake. This is what God is about to do to you. He's about to give you back the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, the locust has eaten up. God says, I'm ready to restore, but I'm looking for some praises. I'm ready to bring back, but I'm looking for some praises. I'm ready to give you everything that was taken from you, but I'm looking for some praises. Then Joel, he writes something that totally blows my mind. It wasn't the devil that sent the locust. It wasn't the devil that sent the canker worm. The devil didn't send the caterpillar, and the devil didn't send the palmer worm. God says, they were my great army, which I sent among you. Now, here's what I didn't understand. That as soon as your crops start to grow, the insects are going to come. And they're going to come and eat the leaves and they gonna try to kill what you've been planting and watering and fertilizing. That is an indication that something great is about to bloom in your garden. If the bugs don't come, maybe the fruit don't come. Cause what I found out that when the beetle bugs come to eat the leaves, the honeybee comes to make the honey. The honeybee comes and gets the pollen out of the blooms so that he can make honey. And God says, I sent the locust. I sent the canker worm. I sent the caterpillar. I sent the palmer worm. Watch this. Because I got a timeline on how much they can eat of your fruit. 
He said, they can't eat it all up. He said, I will tell them to eat, but don't go no further. That's what God is saying to the devil. You can touch them, but don't kill them. You can take something from them, but don't wipe them out. He said, you can go so far and no further. Here's what I found out. 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 That if the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar eats it, what they eat causes the plant to grow stronger. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all like fufu life. Y'all like the magic carpet ride. Y'all like cloudy life. You just put me on a cloud and send me to heaven. I want no turbulence. I want no bumps. I just want, I want no trouble. Lord, just let me. No, 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 no. What God does when he sends the insects, they might eat the leaves, but God says, I got a timeline on how much they can eat. And then what I found out is that the plant grows back Stronger. So you know what? They only ate the weak stuff. They only ate the stuff that wouldn't survive 100 degree heat. They only ate the stuff that wouldn't survive the thunderstorm, the hailstorm. They only, they only ate what God wanted them to eat. They only eat what was going to die anyway. They did. What, whatever's been taken was stuff you didn't need anyway. Y'all, I wish I had some help in here. I know you think and you like it and it looks good, but God says, don't you know I got more for you? I got better for you. I got bigger for you. I got more exciting things for you. And you want to hold on to this. So God takes it. Never forget. Never forget. I, I lost my job early. Lady E and I, we were married in May of 1997, May 31st. By September that same year, I had lost my job. Lady E said, I got you. Now, we were making a uh, minimum wage. Minimum wage and starting a family, minimum wage. I do not recommend that. I do not. Recommend. I know y'all like to struggle. We gonna come up together. Lord forbid. No, I ain't doing that no more. Uh-uh. We, we ain't gonna struggle. We don't have to, baby. Uh-uh. I don't recommend you marry on minimum wage. It's hard. It's hard being married. Try to be married with no money. That, that you, you, that's a death sentence, but I digress. She said, I got you. A week later, I applied for a job. I got it. That job paid almost triple over the job I just lost a week ago. God allowed the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar to eat that job. And I was just so mortified, like, how am I going to take care of my family? When God had a whole harvest, yeah. had a whole garden for me to eat from just seven days later, and you're crying over what's been left, what's gone, what's been eaten up, and God said, just up the road. I got something better for you. I will restore to you. Here go the shout, verse number 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Watch this. He said, you're not going to have to, anybody grow up in a house with a bunch of people? Did y'all eat cereal? Anybody like cereal? Did y'all have fights over who, who going to get a second bowl of cereal? Everybody didn't get a second bowl, y'all. <laughs> and if you got a second bowl, you're going to have to put some water with that milk. Come on, somebody. Ah, but God says, you're you going to eat in plenty. 
and be satisfied. This is what, Rebel, uh, this is what Jesus said. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Somebody help me with the next part. For in my father's house are many mansions. Then what he say? If it were not so, I wouldn't even told you. What is he saying? He's saying that God has a mansion for each one of us. The mansions are exactly the same size. So God does not diminish his power by giving you a mansion and giving me a half a mansion. But the God we serve is so resourceful, so bountiful in what he has. He can give all of us a mansion and have room enough for more mansions. So he said, you're going to eat in plenty and you're going to be satisfied. Now, when he's talking about satisfied, he's not talking about your belly only. He's talking about your mind, your soul, your spirit, your heart, your family, your children, your loved ones. He, he say, I'm, I'm going to satisfy. He say, you going to eat, but it's going to satisfy everything that's connected to you. And God, we used to sing a song, he satisfies. He satisfies if you only trust him. I know he's satisfied. I need somebody in here to know that Jesus satisfied. He satisfied you from the crown of your hair to the soles of your feet. He satisfies. Satisfied. Satisfies. Satisfies. Here it is. You're going to eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. In other words, he's going to bless you so good that what you went through that looked like shame, the blessing is going to erase the shame. The blessing is going to be so big, so enormous, so complete, so satisfying that what you had to suffer before you got the blessing, he said, I'm going to wipe it from your memory. You're going to forget the pain of what you had to go through because, you know, we hold on to pain. We hold on. Sometimes we are anesthetized and intoxicated by our pain. Oh, them people just hurt me. Oh, but God says, I'm going to feed you so good and satisfy you so good. You won't remember the shame. He tells Israel, he said, you will not remember the shame of your youth. Y'all don't know nothing about this kind of shame, but no, I, don't, I don't suspect none of you all had to eat out of trash cans. How shameful it could have been. I, I, I suspect that y'all didn't have to, uh, 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 have y'all ever borrowed some butter from somebody? And then y'all borrow it from them and they talk about you. Yeah. I never forget my mom and them had to borrow something. I mean, I, I was a young boy. It made me mad. They said, oh, Diane and Joe need to go to town. i like, over some butter? You, you got a whole speech, a whole dissertation, a whole book you writing because uh, we borrowed some butter. Don't you ever need nothing. Don't you ever need nothing. You, you got to be careful how you treat people when they die. You, you got to be careful when you high on top and you got everything. You got to be careful how you pre treat people. My dad said like this. He said, those people that rise to the top real fast, he said, while I'm climbing the ladder, he said, I seen them twice. He said, I seen them go up and I seen them come back down. You got to be careful how you treat people. When you got the upper hand, uh, Elder Francis says like this. He said, uh, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Come on, somebody. Uh-huh. You got to be careful how you treat people. 
He said, Israel, I will, I will cause you to forget the shame of your youth. What was the shame of their youth? They were stragglers. They were nomads. And uh, Judah committed a, 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 a fault against his daughter-in-law. Yeah, that's shame. Uh, the, the, the boys threw their brother in the pit and thought to kill him. That's shame. But God says, I will cause you to forget the shame of your youth. Now, Joel is telling us this by faith because it ain't happened yet he's telling us I'm sending you a word so when I get ready to do it you'll know what to do what they're supposed to do they're going to praise the name of the Lord your God so when I do whenever I do it I want you to praise me I want you to do it. I want you to praise me now by faith. Look at somebody say, by faith. Say, I want you to praise me now. Hear me. I want you to praise me now by faith. They, Lord, they ain't heard me. I want you to praise me now by faith. I ain't did it yet. I'm telling you it's coming, but I want you to praise me now. By faith. All right, look at somebody say, by faith. All right, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I want to go to St. Matthew's chapter 13. St. Matthew's chapter 13. Spidey, we can go to the deck. St. Matthew's chapter 13. St. Matthew's chapter 17. St. Mark chapter 4. St. Matthew chapter 13. 31 and 32. St. Matthew 13, 31, 32. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took... How, how many seeds did the man take? A grain of mustard seed. Look at somebody say, a grain of mustard seed. Now, the mustard seed is smaller than this seed. It, it, it's almost microscopic. It's, it's smaller than this. You have, to be, you have to be careful with a mustard seed. You can't even pinch it. You have to hold it in your hand. He said, now, he put together this parable, saying unto them, a man, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field, which is indeed the least of all seed, that word least means smallest. It's the small, it's not in value, but in quantity and size. It's the smallest of all seed. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. Matthew 17 and 20 says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a must seed, you shall say unto this mountain, move, remove his to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Let's go to St. Mark chapter number 4, verse 30 and 32. St. Mark chapter number 4, verse 30 and 32. St. Mark chapter number 4, verse 30 and 32. 
And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a small grain of mustard seed. Look at somebody say one seed. Which when it is sown in the earth, it is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowl of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. All right. This mustard seed, you don't need great faith. You don't need great faith for God to do something great in your life. You just need faith. Uh, what, uh, what's that song um, one of them R&B singers said, said, I will cross a mountain for you. I cross an ocean for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't care how you get there. Get there if you can. Train, the desert, right? Did they say something about the desert? I'm going to make my own song go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going I'm to make, I'm make my own song go. I'll climb the highest mountain. I'll I, I cross the widest desert. Is that my song? Am I making it up? I'm mixing it. I miss it. it's, it's my song, it's my song. I swim the greatest ocean. Uh, what else? I'll fly to the moon and back. Uh, uh, I'll outrun a train for you. Uh, uh, what Bruno Moore say, he said, I, I will catch a, uh, a grenade for you, right? Didn't he say that? I said, that boy lying. He, he is. I'm sorry, mom, dad. That boy not telling the truth. He lying. He lying. Um, you, you, you don't have to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to prove your faith to God. Uh, the Bible says that John and Peter uh, went into the synagogue at the hour of prayer. There was a specific hour that the Jews prayed. But you don't have to have a specific hour to pray. In fact, Jesus said men ought always pray. Uh, 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 you don't have to go on a 40-day fast to prove your loyalty to God. Uh, you don't have to do something grand and audacious and auspicious and, and, and grandiose to prove uh, that you are uh, involved with God. Uh, Jesus simply said that if you have the faith, watch this, not of a mustard seed, but have the faith the size. Uh, that, so microscopic. So, so, so insignificant, so small that, that if you were to weigh it, it wouldn't weigh nothing. The faith, the size of a mustard seed. He said, if you had faith like that, he said, it should grow. He said, if you, if you just give me the faith, the size of the mustard seed and plant it in the word. That's the ground. That's the ground. Plant it in the word. Plant it in the word. He said, it should grow. Not become a bush. Not become a vine. Not become a stalk. But it's going to become a tree. Uh, Spidey, put, put my tree up there. Uh, put my, it's uh, slide number six. Uh, uh, 
this is what this is what this grain does. This grain turns one seed. It's not a bunch of seed, just one. It turns into a tree that grows up and grows out. It grows out that becomes a landing place for others to use. Y'all missed it. What God needs from us so that we can think big, it mustard seed size faith. Here's how mustard seed size faith, and I'm gonna close, we'll, we'll pick up next time. Uh, this is how mustard seed size faith works. Mustard seed size faith says, I don't qualify for the job, but I'm gonna apply anyway. Uh, mustard seed faith says, I need my salary to be this, and I'm a hundred thousand dollars away from it. But mustard seed faith say, when they ask me what I want, I'm gonna tell them I need this. Cause what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst thing? What's the what's the worst that can happen? You don't get the job. They tell you no on the salary. What's the why are you doing God's work? Say, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick a job I qualify for. I'm just gonna tell them the salary I'm making now, and if they give me five thousand dollars over there, I'll be fine. I, 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 I need a house with six bedrooms, but I'm gonna get an apartment with two. Why are you doing God's work? God says all you need is the faith to believe that I can do it. You might not have an example in your life that says you can do it. But God has said if you have the faith, the peace stuff. That you can believe that I can do it. I can do super abundantly above all you can dare to ask, hope, dream, desire in every area of your life. Y'all, y'all, I look at somebody and say, I'm going to get this in my spirit. All right, I'm, I'm closing with this. Closing, this, this is my second close. This is my second close. I got two more closing. Uh, my, this is my second close. Here's my second close. The nature of a mustard seed. Slide number five, Spidey. Uh, the smallest seed in Palestine, one to two millimeters, which is about 1 64th of an inch. Tiny measure takes about eight to 10 days to germinate when placed under the right conditions. Potential to grow. Mustard seed has been noted as one that has dangerously taken over properties. Look at somebody say, I'm dangerously taking over properties. Say it again, say I'm dangerously. Say I got the potential to grow. Say, I'm a, I got mustard seed faith. All right, I'm closing. Closing number three. Closing number three. All right, number three. Here's my close. My close. Y'all, are you all on band? You all on band? Uh, Spidey, can we put our confession of faith up? Confession of faith. I want you to get this in your, your heart and your spirit. I want you to memorize it. You can memorize this. Let's start at the beginning. I am now releasing my faith by confessing this is the greatest day of my life. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am a recreated being. Old things have passed away. 
and behold, all things have become new. I am created into his glorious image and likeness. I am his workmanship. I complete in Christ. I am full of his spirit and divine power. I am God's property. I have been bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I am free from the curse of the law. Sin, sickness, poverty, fear, doubt, worry, confusion, and all that Satan represents shall not have dominion over me. I am prospering in my spirit, soul, body, and finances, for I am a liberated person. Jesus said, I will know the truth, and the truth will make me free. I am standing fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made me free. I am expecting God to meet all of my needs and to do super abundantly above all I dare to ask, hope, dream, or desire in every area of my life. I speak directly to every mountain of satanic adversity in my life and command them to go. In the name of Jesus, they cannot stay. They must go in Jesus' name. Through the abundance of God's grace, I have received the gift of righteousness, for I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Today, I will worship him with all my heart, soul, and strength. I lift up my voice and my hands in praises and adoration to his glorious name, for he is worthy of praise, and he has made me worthy to praise his name. That's my confession of faith. Look at somebody say, I got a confession of faith. My faith may not be as big as yours, but it works for me. It works for me. We're going to continue this mustard seed faith because where we need to be, it requires us to have faith. The faith that grows. The faith, it may start out small, but it's going to grow and grow till it takes over properties. I want you to believe that God can do anything you, you think God needs your intellect to do what he wants to do in your life? You think God needs you? God don't need you to do what he wants to do in your life. It'd be good if you come along for the ride. But he doesn't need you. What God wants us to do is have faith the size of a mustard seed. Come on, let's give God praise. Perhaps, perhaps you're there and you want prayer. If you, get, you want prayer, give us a hand emoji. If you're here in the audience, you want prayer. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you, our streaming audience. Give us a hand emoji. Type in the comment section. Say, I want prayer. I want prayer. I want prayer. Amen. Amen. We pray for you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for every hand emoji, every hand raised. On those that are here, oh God, desiring prayer, we bless your name. Meet them at the point of their need, oh God, and make a special way for them, oh God. We pray right now blessings upon them and their family and their homes over their loved ones. We stand in prayer, oh God. Touch, move, heal by your power. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And every heart said, amen, amen. Let's give God praise. It's blessing time here at the Lighthouse. I'm going to ask you if you would so be so kind um, to sow as God has led you to give on tonight, on tonight. I want to sow, I want to sow a hundred dollars in tonight's offering uh, um, because I need God to do supernaturally. I need God to do supernaturally something that I have before him. And I just believe that God, I just believe that God can do it. I believe that God can do it. I believe that God can, can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Amen. If you have your offerings, if you want to give by our electronic giving, you can give by Cash App, Givelify, Text to Give, Venmo. Uh, you can mail your checks, 
money orders to the address on your screen. I'm going to ask you to just wave your offerings if you're giving electronically. Just wave it. I want to pray blessings upon you. Dear Lord, we thank you for every offering that's being given. We thank you for everyone that is sowing seed. One seed can produce a takeover. God, I pray right now the seed that we sow produces a takeover in our finances, in our health, in our well-being. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Bless him 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. Amen. All right, we're at the end of the line. I pray blessings upon you and your family. We thank you. Meet us here on Sunday. On Sunday. Um, I know the holiday season is coming up. Amen. But celebrate Independence Day with us here at the Lighthouse. We're going to kick off our dream month. We want you to come with your dreams, whatever your dreams are. Uh, you might be an entrepreneur. You might have some business ideas. We want you to come with your dreams. You might want to be an author. You might want to have a book inside of you. We want you to come with your dreams um, uh, because we're going to talk about dreams and nurturing your dreams and, and, and resourcing your dreams. And so come and be with us all of July as we talk about dreams, dreams, dreams. Having a dream, a vision, uh, a path forward for your life. Look at somebody say, it's not over for me. Say, I'm just starting. I'm just beginning. Yeah, it's not over for me. Huh? Look at somebody say, I got my second win. I got my second win. Amen. Amen. All right, we're at the end of the line. We pray blessings again upon you. Amen. Go in God's grace, and we'll see you all Sunday. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Take care. Bye-bye. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give our social media team a hand. Our young people managing our social media.